Hello guys, it's your boy Young Diamond, and welcome once again to this channel. Now, still on the upcoming protests. Now, it, it will be shocking to know that, you know, counter protests have been going on for the past days, you know, to counter the upcoming protests. Because sponsored groups are being paraded from one city to another, you know, to counter these protests that are supposed to come. And we have a series of videos that have emerged where people come out, you know, to make announcements and to threaten, you know, the masses that whoever comes out, you know, whatever they see, they will be it. And it has been going on for days, not even security forces have called them you know, to order. Don't protest, don't be on the road, but still they allow them, you know, to converge and protest and move about. Even the traditionalists, they've also, you know, gotten themselves involved, you know, with the threat of whoever comes out to protest, you know, meet their own demands and all that. Now, the security service, they are all aware of all this, and no one is being called to do. No one is being called for questioning. Now, this begs also to question the biased nature of both the government and also the security forces. Because if they've been agitating, sponsoring groups, making one or two, you know, media outreach, for people to stop the protest or not to embark on the protest and now we see counter protests already you know flying around it begs to, con it begs to question their integrity it begs to question their integrity because if you stage a counter protest and you are saying no to protest and there is a protest against the protest that's supposed to come then it makes no sense it makes no sense everyone is suffering Everyone is in pain, you know, but to sponsor groups to start, you know, making threats, you know, is not the best. You know, a TikToker was paraded some days back because he made, you know, a violent exclamation on TikTok as regarding the protest, you know, threatening and calling for so-called violence, and he was paraded. Now, but we see these traditionalists, they've been, you know, making violent statements. You see these political art criers, they've been making violent statements. But yet, no one is being paraded. The biased nature of the security forces to those in power. Now, these are some of the videos making the rounds, even on the rise news. You know, just take a glimpse and you get a clear picture of where we are heading. Here in Lagos, Nigeria, a group of young men held a rally at the Lagos Island market to one resident to desist. From participating in the planned protest slated for August 1st, some of the protesters could be heard saying that businesses are yet to recover from the arson that ensued during the NSAS protest of October 2020, while others were seen holding placards, warning traders and customers not to protest. Let's take a look. <laughs> Well, in the same vein, a group of traditionalists, all clad in white garments, stormed the streets of Ikorodu, threatening residents to shun the planned protest. Some could be heard saying that no resident or non-residents who wish to protest should leave the state. Let's take a look. Hmm, Dr. Bati, <laughs> I mean, we are seeing traditionalists now coming out to... <laughs> well, number one, the right 
to protest. We have said it again and again. It's constitutional. The right to freedom of uh, association and assembly is also guaranteed under Section 40. The young men at the market in Lagos who were saying nobody should protest, nobody should come out to protest. No, there's nowhere in the Nigerian constitution where it is said that whether you are a hoodlum or you are of any orientation, you can dictate to other people that they cannot use their rights. There are no absolute rights yet. But only a court of law or the security agencies can abbreviate some of those rights if you violate, but not a fellow citizen saying that you cannot, you cannot protest if you want to protest. As for the uh, traditionalists, well, we saw it during the election mm -hmm. when they were uh, putting ritual sacrifice and all that around the place. What I've seen is that there is already a commercial side to this uh, proposed protest. Mm -hmm. You know some people were printing uh, T-shirts no to protest. Yes. Some people now are going around with ritual things. They are, you know, organizing. They, I don't think they are using their own money to do it. But they are being sponsored. Well, they, somebody must be uh, yes. sponsoring them. And they cannot say non-residents should leave the state. No. Any Nigerian can live in any part of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's what the Constitution says. So people should just know the, that, you know, there are rights, but there are also limits to your rights. You don't have absolute uh, uh, rights. And uh, we are hoping that the people who are saying people should not protest will not engage in violence. If they do, the Nigerian uh, state has a responsibility to arrest those people. Whether they say they are, so, uh, they are uh, opposed to the protest or not, nobody has the right to cause mayhem or chaos. Oh, and please, when the security agencies do their work, Nobody should come here and begin to talk about, uh, you know, the state uh, brutalizing them. If you engage in violence, you have committed a felony. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter that you are saying uh, you are against protests, uh, you, are, you are this. If you cause problem, if, if I, even if you are a traditionalist, the, the state has a responsibility to arrest you if you cause problem. And uh, going about with uh, fetish objects and threatening people with fetish objects. I mean, it's a crime it, under the criminal code. I'm glad you raised that up. It's a I, crime under the criminal code. You no, can't use it to threaten people. I hope they know I'm that. I'm glad that you raised that up. I mean, because we're only just discussing about the Oro Festival. Yes. I mean, we haven't heard much about that. That's going to also take place, right? Yeah. I believe. I mean, the, the plant protest is for, it's like for tomorrow. Yeah. Is tomorrow it? Is yeah. Just yeah. tomorrow. Freedom of religion. But there's but also, don't use your uh, charms, yeah. your religion, you to harm charms, people. Yes. To harm people. I mean, also, but you know, if I heard you mention this, we know that the Take It Back movement, that's the organizers of the planned nationwide protest, have rejected the proposal by the Inspector General of Police, uh, Kayode Egbetokun, that demonstrations should be conducted in confined spaces. Hmm. The organizers insisted that the protest would be a public march across the country. I mean, how do you protest in confined spaces, Rufai? I've not heard that before. See. But I would like for you to comment on this particular subject, and that is Asari Dokubo oh. as well. In the meantime, from a Niger Delta militant, Asari Dokubo on Tuesday, warned organizers of the planned nationwide protest not to come to the Niger Delta. Asari gave the warning while speaking at the Niger Delta Sensitization Conference for Ethnic Nationalities, Youth and Women held in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. Asari stated that the agenda of those behind the protest do not capture the problems of the people of the Niger Delta and that they are merely interested in the resources coming from the region. He described them as anarchists and also alleged that those who lost the election are backing the protest aimed at removing the government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let's take a look. If the, anybody have the right to protest, I also have the right to resist protest. Where are your rights stop, that's where my right begins. I am anti-protest. Uh, people will say that they've given him money. That's why he's talking this way. I am now. Go take your own. Me, I don't take my own. Those who brought anti sars protest and went to Obibo, they collected from me Woto Woto. We must not allow them to bring their anarchy here. Yeah. But if you get stronger, you bring them. 
If you do anyhow, you go see anyhow. Those who have lost the election should prepare for 2027. Thank you. <laughs> if you do anyhow, you will see anyhow. Yeah. Asari Dokubo, and now he's there. He says it's President Bola Ahmed in the book. He has returned. He, has returned. he says it's turn by turn. He said he don't, he said he don't collect his money. If you want, collect, so your, own. collect your own. I so mean. he don't collect his own. We know why they talk. Oji, we have built an Obeshan state. The same state somebody here was defending yesterday clever. and saying fraud means being clever. That's what we have built. And we're going to see the end of it. The police say they are looking for intelligence. Asari Dokubo is giving you free intelligence that he's going to cause chaos. Water, water, he said. The people in the markets are giving free intelligence. Awa Bamiya Lasho Waiti, Bamiyeko, Bamiyo, Iba, Iba. They went on the street with their charm. They are giving you free then they are going to cause chaos. The state is watching and not saying anything. We have created an obeisance state where people don't play by the rules. And it is a dastardly state it provides. It is chaos and avarice that will constantly follow. That's why you see today, Nigeria is the fight of the most violence. So you can see the country we've built. This same video you played was highlighted to IGP Egwedokun. He feigned ignorance like he didn't know that people were being threatened. So obviously, it is these same people that have threatened, they will cause the violence tomorrow. But does the police care? Does the state care about the security of people? No. Because this was the same people when somebody threatened fire and brimstone during the election. The state CP came out to say what? He said he was joking. But you see, I'd like to quote the words this morning of Charlie Chaplin in a movie called The Great Dictator. He said there will be an end someday to these great dictators where this hatred and avarice will cease, where the freedom and the liberty of man will be enthroned. It looks like it's going to be a long night for us as Nigeria, but I know one day we'll come out of this long-winded tunnel of hypocrisy and avarice and come forth and break forth into a shining light. People have a right to protest. Yes. They don't have a right to be intimidated. Like the state does not care for them. It's on the states to protect them. But if the state doesn't, then we can all see the hypocrisy for what it was, yeah. for what it is as we're speaking today. All right. So Asari Dokubo, carry on. You mean you say you will do it, you will go scot free, but you forget that there's a God that lives someday. What's that, Rafael? All of us we answer to that God one day. What's that, Rafael? You know, I, lo I love God. your point about, you know, um, the intelligence that has been given here now by the traditionalists yeah. as well as Asari Dokubo, where he clearly he did say what he said, and I've just played it here.